Hi, everyone. So our live session to do Critter Crafts is going to start here in just a couple minutes. I'm going to give it a few more minutes to make sure um, anybody who wanted to join us can join us. Um, so in the meantime, if you haven't already, go ahead and gather up your supplies. If you saw our Facebook post about the supplies that you'll need today, um, you might already have an idea of what you'll need. If you haven't, I'll just kind of take a few minutes while we're waiting for people to join um, to go over what we're going to be using today. So the first thing you're going to need is a paper plate. Um, I really like these just like regular cheap plastic, uh, the cheap cardboardy type ones. The plastic ones don't bend as easily and we're going to be bending these. Um, so one paper plate is enough for today. Um, as well as some construction paper. So really the two colors um, that you'll need are gonna be yellow and black. Some scissors. Um, I have some clear gel tacky glue here. This is what I'm gonna use today, um, as well as a Sharpie. And then if you wanted to do a ribbon to hang it up or a magnet to put on the back, you can also do that, but that's really just optional. Um, and then one of the things that I forgot to add to our supply list that I kind of discovered later was um, for stenciling out the eyes, I'm going to be using these bottle caps. I have two different sizes, um, but you can also just freehand the eyes, um, just making a little bit of a circle. It's not gonna be uh, too big a deal. So like this is an example of one that I made the other day. I just freehanded the eyeballs. So it still looks pretty good. You don't really necessarily need a stencil, but if you wanted to use one and you had a um, extra bottle cap lying around, you can use that to help stencil that. So, um, Again, it looks like we've got a couple more people that have just joined us. I just went over our supply list. Um, if you hadn't seen the supply list, there is a post that kind of goes over all the different things that you'll need today. Um, but hopefully everybody's already gathered up their supplies and um, we can get ready to go here in just a couple more minutes. I think I'm gonna give it a minute or two to allow more people to show up. We did say three o'clock um, and I have 301 right now. So we'll just kind of go over um, some of the other things that we can do with this craft. So like I said, um, some of the optional uh, accessories to our little craft owl is that you can do this um, ribbon to hang it up. I also glued a little magnet strip on the back. Um, and this is really great. I could just stick it up on the refrigerator um, if you have kids at home that are making this craft and you wanna be able to hang it up on uh, your refrigerator, the magnet is a great option. And the other thing that we can do is we can actually, um, this one here is like, is glued down so it doesn't open up, but I made another one that actually isn't glued down and I wrote a little note to our volunteers inside and then I hung it up on one of our bulletin boards. So this is actually also a nice idea. You can do this, um, make it a card and then send it to uh, relatives, whether it's grandparents or um, aunts and uncles or something like that. So that's another option if you guys want to make a card when we go through and make these, just don't glue this part down so you can open it up and write a little note inside. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and um, start with our crafts. So first we're gonna start with our paper plate. Like I said, um, the ones that are bendy work best for this craft. So what we're gonna do first is we are going to take the paper plate and we're gonna fold the sides in like this. So this is going to end up being our little wings here. So you're gonna to wanna to fold the two sides into the middle. And then once you've done that, you wanna take the top and just fold down a little bit. This is probably about a little over an inch um, and that's going to make the head. So we'll go ahead and just do that real quick. I am going to be making this craft in real time with you guys. Um, so if you do need me to slow down or you have a question about something, go ahead and put in a comment. Um, and then if you're watching this, if you're not watching this live and you're watching this later and you have any questions, um, you can also still leave a comment and we'll do our best to kind of get back to you guys um, as soon as possible. So first we're gonna fold in the sides to make our little owl wings. Okay, so here I have my paper plate. I've just folded the sides in, and now I'm gonna fold the top down about an inch or so so that we have our little owl head, okay? Now, if you got paint or crayons or uh, colored pencils to do um, 
the feathers and the other drawing portions of this craft. Um, you can go ahead and paint now. I'm actually going to leave mine white um, because I am actually going to be making a snowy owl. That way I don't have to do any extra painting, but if you do wanna paint it and you do some like browns and things like that, you can actually make uh, other species of owls that we have here in Pennsylvania, such as the great horned owl um, and the screech owl are two examples of other owls that we have here. But I'm gonna leave mine white. I'm gonna make my snowy owl. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a Sharpie and I'm going to draw these like little half circles um, for a little feather. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And you guys can go ahead and draw your little feathers um, on the wings as well. You don't necessarily have to draw anything down here. I just like to do it on the wing portion. So I'll go ahead and do that. And while I'm doing that, one little note to, um, if you do larger semicircles, it'll take a lot less time and still look really good. Um, if you do the smaller ones, it still looks just as good. It just takes a little bit extra time. So I'm gonna draw some larger ones for the sake of this video today. And while I'm doing that, I want to give you guys some fun, interesting facts about snowy owls. So snowy owls are pretty rarely seen here in central Pennsylvania. Um, they're more often seen up north in parts of Canada and in the Arctic region. Um, but they do come down um, to parts of Pennsylvania every once in a while. If you are in Pennsylvania and you've ever been to the uh, Zoo America, they have a snowy owl there. So you might have been able to see one at a zoo or maybe on TV. Um, Snowy owls, uh, when it comes to the adult males and females, they are pretty easily recognizable. The males are generally completely white and the females tend to have more brown in their feathering. So they're white and brown, um, but they look almost like uh, they have little pebbles on their uh, bodies, which is part of their camouflage when they, um, are on their nests and they are having babies. And speaking of babies, um, snowy owls can generally have between five to 10 eggs on average. So if you think about a, a chicken egg carton that you might buy at the store, um, that's that usually comes in about a dozen or 12 eggs. So a snowy owl can have almost a full carton of eggs at one time. Uh, the females are also slightly larger than the males. So if you made two of these paper plate owls and you made one a little bit smaller, the larger one could be a female and the smaller one could be a male. So now I'm finished with my feathers that I've drawn here. So again, if you don't, if you do want to turn this into a card, you don't have to glue the top down. But um, if you don't want it to be a card and you just want it to be a hanging ornament, we'll go ahead and glue this top portion down. So I'm going to take my clear gel tacky glue and I'm just going to put a little bit on here and hold it down. This does take a, a little bit to dry, so I am going to hold it for a few minutes um, while we go through that. And then if you're using other types of glue and you're having trouble with the um, top portion coming up like this, you can take like a clothespin and then just use that to help hold it down until it dries. So I'll go ahead and do that. And like I said before, if anybody has any questions or they're curious about something, whether it's what um, West Shore Wildlife Center does, um, if it's about native animals in Pennsylvania, or if it's about owls, um, please feel free to leave a comment um, or send us a message. So there I've got the top portion down and it is trying to come up a little bit so I'm just going to set something down on top of it while I move on to cutting out the eyes. Now the eyes are my favorite part because owl eyes are actually very interesting. Um, if you've ever looked straight forward and kept your head still and then moved your eyes from side to side like this, a fun fact is that owls actually cannot do that. They can't move their eyes. So what they have to do is they have to move their heads completely in order to be able to see around them. So if you've ever seen owls um, turning their heads, it looks like they can almost turn their heads completely 
backwards. They do that because their eyes actually don't move. So they have to move their heads in order to be able to see and find uh, any of their prey items or look out for predators. So as we're making the eyes, I like to keep that in mind. Um, that's just a really cool, fun fact about owls. Now for the eyes, I'm going to be doing the two colors. I'm gonna do one black and one yellow. So you can see here, the black is kind of like the pupil. It's a little bit smaller. And then the yellow is a little bit larger. It's gonna go around the outside. One fun thing about owls is typically speaking, most adult owls have either black and yellow eyes or completely black eyes. Now, this really depends on the species and it has different functions. Uh, generally speaking, owls are mostly nocturnal, although some owls will be found out during dusk, dawn, um, even different times of day. So owls that have completely black eyes are certain species. For example, here in Pennsylvania, we have an owl that's called a barred owl. And a barred owl does have completely black eyes. If you look it up, it's spelled B-A-R-R-E-D, barred owls. Um, they just have completely black eyes. Whereas other animals, such as our snowy, uh, snowy owl that we're making right now, as well as other species of owls that we have here, such as the great horned owl and our screech owls, um, they have black and yellow eyes. So that has, um, that's a really fun fact. If you wanted to make another paper owl that was a little bit more uh, species specific in the anatomy and you wanted to do say a barred owl, you could just do fully black eyes. So I've got my two little black um, pupil portions done. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the large yellow portions now as well. And try to think of some other fun owl facts that I can tell you guys while I'm doing this. If anybody has ever seen a screech owl, there are actually two, um, two specific kinds. There's Eastern and there's Western. And so here in Pennsylvania, we do have the Eastern screech owl. Um, and there's also two different colors. Um, they are referred to as two different morphs, M-O-R-P-H-S, two different morphs. So we have the gray morph screech owl, and we also have the red morph screech owl. So just like the name implies, our red morphs are going to be more of an auburn color, and our gray morphs are going to be more of a grayish color. But they're both the same species. They're just different colors. It's sort of like uh, humans who have different colored hair. Um, and the reason that they have these colors, if you've ever seen a screech owl, they're quite small and they blend in really, really well. They have fantastic camouflage. Um, a lot of times, if you look at pictures of screech owls, especially in trees, which is where they like to um, like hang out, it's very, very difficult to see them. And it actually makes for a very, very fun um, like hide and seek kind of game that you can play with your kids to have them see if they can spot the screech owl in the trees. Um, a lot of you may have also seen great horned owls. Those are very, very abundant here in Pennsylvania. Um, they're much larger. So Eastern screech owls are actually quite small. Uh, an adult is about this big. Um, and a lot of people mistake them actually for baby owls, uh, myself included, before I knew any better. I thought that a screech owl that I had seen was actually a baby owl. Um, but no, an adult is very, very small. They're about this big um, compared to, say, your great horn owl or even your snowy owls that are much, much larger. So now I've cut out both of my pieces for my eyeballs. So I'm just going to take the black one. I'm going to glue it on top of the yellow one. And then I'm just going to glue that on top of my owl plate here. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, once again, I wanna thank everybody for joining me today. This is my first time doing this uh, live session Critter Crafts and I was really excited about it. Um, I hope that it's something that I can kind of continue to do for you guys and help get um, our kids involved and really excited about nature and animals.
um, because I know that as a young child, I was very much in love with animals and clearly that passion has uh, continued on today. So thank you again for everybody who's joined us. Um, also a huge shout out and thank you to everybody who's donated today. Um, if you didn't know, today is our uh, virtual baby shower where we are working on raising funds and um, clearing our Amazon and Chewy wish lists as we prepare for our busiest time of year, which is the spring baby season. So it's already started. We have already had a few baby squirrels come in that we are having to hand feed every couple of hours. And we know that in the coming weeks, that's uh, we're just going to be getting tons more baby orphaned possums and um, cotton tails and squirrels and all kinds of other animals. So we're very excited about it. We love baby season. Um, we have a lot of wonderful, dedicated volunteers and interns who come in and help care for these animals with us. Um, so your contributions really are so helpful for us. Um, we are 100% publicly funded. So um, it really makes a huge difference for every dollar. Every dollar just counts. So I am now gluing on my owl eyes onto the plate. Um, another fun thing about owls is that they actually do have their eyes on the front of their faces, uh, like humans do. If you've ever seen uh, other animals such as um, like crows, for example, they have eyes on either sides of their head. And so they actually do have to, um, they use that to see around them. But owls have eyes situated on the front of their head. And this actually helps um, create what's called like a binocular effect. It helps them see farther in the distance than other animals do. Um, this is really important for them as they are a predator species. And so this is going to help aid them in being able to find their meals. Okay, so I've got my little eyes on here. I hope everybody is also caught up and uh, that I'm not going too fast for you. If I am, please just say something and I, I definitely can slow down for you. Um, but if not, then I'm going to go ahead and move on to making the beak. And the beak is pretty simple. I just cut out this little diamond shape. Um, I made it a little bit smaller on the top than it is on the bottom, but if it's a true diamond, it's really uh, no big deal. Either one is fine. Um, but fun fact, snowy owls do in fact have black beaks. So that's why I wanted to make sure that I used some black construction paper. And I won't be doing it today. Um, you can also make little feet for your owl if you'd like. Um, if you've ever seen a picture or a video of an owl's feet, they have these very, very large talons. Um, and again, like I was mentioning before, owls are a predator species, which means they hunt for their food. They hunt other animals for their food. And those talons are so important in helping them catch their prey. Um, they're very, very sharp. And so if you wanted to, to you could also make feet for your owl. And then um, if you're doing a snowy owl like me, their talons are black. So you can use the same construction paper to make uh, sharp talons for your owl. So here I've made my little beak and it's definitely not perfect. It's kind of like a little kite. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and just glue that to the center in between the eyes. And if you guys are doing this craft, um, we would love to see your finished products. Um, if you're making them with your kids, you can uh, take a photo of your kids with the craft if you like and tag us in it at West Shore Wildlife Center. Um, but we definitely would like to share what everybody has created with us today. So there is our little beak. And that is going to be the base of our owl. He's pretty much done. Like I said, if you wanted to, there's an option to go ahead and do a little ribbon. Um, or you can do a little magnet on the back. I'm going to go ahead and glue this ribbon to it. Make like a little loop so that it can hang. Um, let's see. 
Oh, yeah. One really interesting fact that I learned about owls. Um, if you've ever heard a group of owls, that's referred to as a parliament. And they got that name. Um, it was inspired by C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia, where he described a group of uh, owls in his story. So that's that's kind of where that came from. I thought that was really interesting. Um, a fun little trivia tidbit about owls. Now, the other thing is, if you notice, we didn't make any ears necessarily for the owls. Um, one really cool thing, another really cool thing about owls is that they do have ears. They are little holes in the sides of their heads, but they are asymmetrical, which means that one of them is up higher than the other. So if you were to imagine ear holes on this owl, one might be up here and another one might be down here. And that actually helps them hear a lot better. So really cool stuff. Owls have a lot of really fun, amazing features. They are awesome animals um, and they make for great paper plate crafts. So that's all for that. Um, like I said, if you guys want, you could have not glued the top down and written a little note inside and use these as a card. Um, these can also be used as like Christmas ornaments during the holidays um, or just fun little decorations to put up. So I hope you guys enjoyed making this craft for me really quick, super simple, really easy. Um, hopefully I didn't go too fast for you guys and I really hope that you enjoyed it. Um, once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments. Um, check out our page today. We're doing lots of fun activities. We're doing lots of trivia, some uh, wildlife themed baby shower games, um, and posting a lot of stories about all the previous babies that we've helped in the past. So it's going to be a day filled with guaranteed cuteness. Oh, thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I may have forgotten to introduce myself at the beginning, but my name is Erica. I'm the Education and Outreach Coordinator here at West Shore Wildlife Center, um, and we hope to see you guys again soon. Have a good day.